How many of you are gamers? Woo! All right, cool. Systems, uh, Xbox? PS4? I'll get to the Master Race, calm down. Uh, Wii? Yes. Woo! <laughs> Android or another portable? PC Master Race? Dude. Right, okay, awesome. So if you haven't figured it out, this is nothing to do with like steam and like, like water, right? This is uh, Steam OS PC living for the PC gaming for the living room. The title is called Building Your Own Steam Box because when I had the idea for this talk, Steam OS wasn't around. Everything I'm going to show you here is very beta, very new, and very awesome. So who am I? My name is George Castro. If you were here earlier, um, I gave my talk on Ubuntu. I work at Canonical. <laughs> on Ubuntu as part of my day job. And then um, I started getting these things called hobbies, which I wanted to be work-related, but not too work-related, because I burned you out, right? Um, and I had not PC games in a while, and then this was announced, and I was like, that is my new weekend project. That's what I'm gonna do with my life. Normal guy, right? So um, I don't work for Valve. I met one guy at Valve, and that's when they announced their Linux port at the Ubuntu Developer Summit. Um, and I remember sitting in the audience and seeing the Ubuntu logo and the Valve logo there, and I was like crying. <laughs> My whole adult life had been leading up to this moment. I don't work for Valve. Thank you. I also don't speak for Valve. I have very strong opinions on what I think SteamOS is awesome at, what it sucks at, and what it should be, and what it could be. But um, everything that you see here is basically my opinion from working on it. So don't be blogging, you know, Valve said that George thought this was a good idea. Not me. Don't, don't speak. I and mean, I actually don't know anything about Valve, um, other than like the employee handbook is all flat and everyone wants to work for him now because it looks really cool. Um, so everything that you see here is actually available publicly. You just have to be a total dork to spend all your time working on this to figure it out. So I figure if I'm going to do it, I might as well share it with the rest of you so we can all make awesome Steam machines and bring the gloriousness of PC gaming to the living room. Yay! So what SteamOS is, I'm going to... So here's the problem, is that... Uh, People heard about SteamOS and immediately everyone started jumping to conclusions, right? Um, actually, what Valve has stated about what SteamOS is and is not, it's pretty clear. The problem is, is that you go on Reddit and then we all think, oh my god, finally the game is going to save us from everything. And, and people start to roll with that and then they think that is. So, SteamOS is a way to launch Steam. That's it. <clears throat> that is all SteamOS does. SteamOS is a console like experience. Means it's designed for things like controllers. Hold the controller up. Okay. It's geeky under hood, Debbie Weezy. So, you know, built on one of the greatest OS's ever. I mean, uh, we built a Bluetooth off of Debian. Duh, that's a great place to be. Um, but you don't care, and that's important. And I'll talk about that later on. Oh, I went backwards. Sorry. What SteamOS is not is just as important as what SteamOS is. So, SteamOS is not a desktop OS replacement, right? So a lot of people are like, finally Valve is doing SteamOS. It'll be great. I can finally get rid of my Windows machine and get and, and get on Steam. <coughs> SteamOS is not that, okay? Whatever desktop operating system you have, right? If you're, like, I use Ubuntu and I use on Steam. So Steam is just getting stuff to the living room for me, right? There's nothing stopping you from moving to any operating system because Steam already runs on all the operating systems. So it's not a desktop OS replacement. It's not a PC gaming replacement yet. This is all about bringing PC gaming from your nerdy little office space where like you work all day and then you game all day and then like smells in there and your wife hates you. Right? This is about chilling back on your couch with a controller, with a beer, having a good time. That's, that's what this is about, right? You're not gonna be competitively playing uh, Counter-Strike like on your couch, right? Um, so SteamOS is designed for you to do that, where that makes sense with a mouse, mouse and keyboard, and for the nice casual gaming and stuff in the couch. This is all about moving, get extending PC gaming to being a nice experience on the couch. It's not a, currently not a good replacement for AC PC. Excuse me. So people hear SteamOS, I can't wait to get XPC and Plex running on it. Totally amazing, right? And you can do that. It's got a pain in the ass, but it's not what it's designed to do yet, right? We have theories, like I can't wait for Netflix to magically show up in Steam one day, right? Because, <laughs> really? I mean, we're not stupid. We know that it's like who they're, what they're talking about, right? 
Um, but it is a gap. So if you have a Roku, you have a I got a Fire TV, which is okay, or you have an existing um, you know Plex machine or XBMC machine, uh, you're not throwing that way that away anytime soon. Um, and it is not ready for widespread use, right? Um, the people, the kind of people that come to Linux and PenguinCon style conferences, right? We, you are not the middle of the bell curve, right? You're the early adopter, right? Um, so that's why I'm talking about it here. So don't go hang out with your friends who are like, dude, I can't wait to play Madden, and be like, Steam. That's not going to work. Um, so it's all about managing expectations with Steam OS, uh, especially considering that it was announced in October, and it's now only May. So I just got off a plane. I went to a conference. I'm really tired. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but those of us that build operating systems and stuff and software know that like it takes a, a long time, even with fast iteration, to build something good. Um, so they do iterate fast. You get to see a lot of improvements, um, but it just takes a while. This is my favorite thing when, pe when people find out about Steam OS. Right? All it does is launch Steam. Are you kidding me? Like this whole time, oh my God, finally Linux is gonna happen for like the normal people, and it'll be great. All this does is launch Steam. All this does is literally just boot with a nice splash screen and then launches Steam a big picture. That's all Steam does. How many of you are currently using Steam already? Right? How many of you are kind of used to, you're using the normal interface, right? You see, it kind of looks like iTunes, but for games, um, except not, not performing. Um, I'm just kidding, just kidding. I should, did I really just compare Steam to iTunes? That was an accident. Um, but on the right, you know, you had that big picture button? Right? You click that and then you, whoa, what's this? Remember the first time you saw that? What the hell? Right? Um, and you launch that, and then you hook up your controller, it's like, oh man, it's just like it's just like a console. So it's an appliance OS dedicated specifically to doing that. Um, and in that in that kind of vein, Steam OS itself is really not important, right? Because it's transparent. Its job is just launch Steam, get out of the way. And that is also why it is important, right? It lets you control the experience from the hardware all the way up to the boot, to the stuff, right? I want to be able to game as fast as possible. So my story, uh, someone was asked, are you going to play Xbox and PlayStation the whole time? And I'm not going to try to do that because really, uh, it's not that those things are horrible. Uh, it's just where the potential where Steam is going, I think, is much greater than that. But um, like everybody else in Detroit, right, I like to like create a guy in NHL hockey and pretend you got drafted by the Red Wings, right, and you're playing. I call them this, right? Um, whatever. And I hadn't used my Xbox in a while, and I like to turn it on and then upgrade it, and the UI keeps changing from a game console to whatever it is they want it to be. And like I boot up my Xbox, and it's like, you know, release now, Justin Bieber, whatever his album is. And I was like, you know, this is really not what I want at this moment in time. So my Xbox tried to sell me a Justin Bieber album. And I don't know about you guys, I like metal. But that's a totally unacceptable. <laughs> that, is, that is not what I want to go, right? So why is that? Why, why is my Xbox trying to sell me a Justin Bieber album? Right? Because consoles turned into what PCs used to be, while Steam fixed PC games, right? I don't know how many of you guys have a newer console or whatever, right? All the problems. When consoles first came out, you're like, yeah, I have my PC, what a pain in the ass, I got like a CD, and I don't know how to do all this stuff. And then each game was patched different, right? And then like, then you had to have the CD and the drive for it to work, right? And then like, you lost a launch disk, but disk two you could always find, right? You know, where's your launch disk? I swear to God, I have five copies of Rise of Nations, right, on PC. And I literally cannot play the game, because all my disk ones, I don't know where they are, right? Um, Steam fixed that, right? You just go, patching is nice to remember. I don't know, those of you that are old enough to remember, you have to individually patch games. It's generally a pain in the ass. Meanwhile, consoles are getting complicated, man. Like, you turn them on, they're always like updating, and then like, it used to be not the place where people cheated, and then like, it just got horrible. Like, it seems like all the reasons that you would buy a console for it to just fire up and just work um, are really kind of going away. So that, that really started to bother me, right? And it's because of the fight for the, everyone thinks there's gonna be some magical box that everyone like, like, you know, it, we will do everything for that, right? And that's what everyone's tr been trying to do for how long, right? I'm like almost 40 years old and everyone's talking, the fight for the living room. It's gonna control your content. It's just, it's gotten old, right? And consoles are just so much a pain in the ass as computers are, right? My friend got, um, he got the, 
Batman Origins or something for the console. And like, there was this thing where there was a bug, and he played again for six hours, he came back, and the save games were gone. I was like, man, that's what PC gaming used to be like. Uh, so now consoles are like just as bad, right? They're shipping them unfinished, and you got to patch them. They're just gaming. Um, it's sacrificing gaming experience for things that I don't want, right? It's like, um, why is my console trying to sell me Justin Bieber? Right? Because why would we have a dedicated machine that's awesome for one purpose? We can have one machine that's just mediocre at a bunch of them. Uh, consoles are no longer price subsidized. That's why they cost six to seven hundred dollars. I bought the price of a PC. Um, and it's not like the old, old days where if you bought a console, you got a sneak peek at the next generation consoles. The hardware I'm showing you you hear is way more powerful than you get in a PS4 or, or an Xbox One. They're no, long, they're no longer the cutting edge, right? And they certainly don't make economic sense versus PCs, right? So on PCs, I don't have to pay a per monthly fee. There's this concept called Steam sales, which are like amazing, right? It's like, whoa, right? And uh, the, the, console market is, the console market is totally different, right? You, you buy a used game. Right, and then you go buy a used game. It used to be this, the you know they'd be all scratched and stuff. It didn't work, but that's they're kind of generally doing a great job of that, right? And the developers would be like, oh, they use game market. And everyone's arguing whether used game market is a is a good idea or not. I so don't care anymore. I have Steam sales. I know that twice a year, I just give them a bunch of my money, and I get to play games and I queue them up. I actually don't even end up playing games. I'm like collecting Pokemon. Uh, that sounds that sounds like a digital distributor's like wet dream, right? It's like, my God, they're not even playing the game, man. They're just buying them. Um, so they don't, I don't think they don't make economic sense, right? You do make, um, at least in the old days, you made a bigger initial investment into a PC, right? It was it was more expensive, but the games are cheaper. Um, and as you upgrade your hardware, your old games actually get better, right? And then they stopped subsidizing consoles because they started to realize, hey, wait a minute, this is sustainable. So this is just one example. I'm picking on the Xbox One, but you could probably pick whatever. Um, and like I said, I don't, I don't want to flame consoles too much, although I could all day. Um, so the Xbox One is a feature where it integrates with your cable box. You put your cable box, you put your Xbox One, you put in and out, and they're like, this is an amazing console. The one box that everybody's trying to get rid of in their house, the cable box, the one with numbers on it, right? The thing without search. We're gonna integrate that, right? To me, that's that's a console designed for the last generation, not this generation, right? I got an Amazon Fire. I say Game of Thrones, I got to get a Game of Thrones. I'm not figuring out what channel it's supposed to be on. It's stupid. Right, and then they got flame. They're like, it needs an online connection so that like, if we figure out you buy the game, you can lend it to your friends, but if you want to play it, then you take it back. All the stuff that like, publishers like would want to enforce with sharing games. I got flame for it. How dare my console be connected to the internet? Note the year, people. Everyone's like, how dare this thing be wanted to connect to the internet? But Steam always connected to the internet. That's the whole way the entire platform works. So they were right. They were just unwilling to break with the patch. Right? That's why it has uh, one of those circular things that you put data on that we don't use anymore. Floppy disk? DVDs, CDs, yeah, that's why they have that. Why would they have that? I don't know. Laser disc. Um, so they were willing to break with the past, but they broke backward compatibility anyway. So if you bought the new Xbox, guess what happens to your old library of games? <coughs> Screwed, right? Um, whereas PCs, you upgrade them, and your games actually start to look better, right? So it, um, there's a lot to be said there. Consoles are designed for a world where you go to GameStop to buy stuff, and then you take that home and you consume it, right? Today's era, I want to play Batman, I want to hit a button, somebody gets paid, and then I get Batman, right? You go to games, they're like, the guy's always a douchebag, too. So, you know, it's, okay, it's a lot better. It's like, god damn, I'm just trying to buy a game. Um, yeah, yeah. Do you want a controller and like, yeah, six cans of that? Like, why? Dude, I just wanted to buy a game. So, uh, whatever. But enough preaching, right? No one wants to get preached at all day. Um, uh, yeah, like the Amen, PC Master Racers are like, hey, Amen, brother! Yeah, so that's that's something, we should talk about that afterwards, about uh, locking into a cloud service. I, I absolutely get what you say. Um, so yeah, don't worry, I have a slide where, where we have bad things. Don't worry. Um, I'm not a fanboy, I'm just a good guy. 
<laughs> so demo here. Let's actually switch to Steamo. Oh, that's my job. Hold on. Uh, so switch. Was everyone in the room when I booted it up? No, we don't know. Okay, so let's do that again. So hit the controller. Actually, let me drive here for a second, and then I'll let you drive. Okay. All right. So. There you go. Ah, so that's Steam crashing. That's actually what happened. Now remember, I did say what you're seeing here is very alpha. I'm going to talk about hardware and choosing the right components and all that stuff. So I'm really burpy. I had a few beers before we here. I hope it's not that obvious. Okay, so you have your Steam machine, you turn it on. So what you're seeing here is the BIOS screen for your, for your PC or whatever. And then what you can see here is the Steam logo. This is both a Grub. How many Linux people in here? This is a Grub theme and also a Plymouth theme afterwards, so that when they move from Grub to Plymouth, it's all the same, it's all the same stuff. Um, there are some bugs here as far as mode switching with the Intel that I have, and we'll get into those details later. And then, after doing all of this, there it is, Steam. How many of you have not seen Steam Big Picture mode? Okay, awesome. So Steam Big Picture Mode was designed to bring you Steam and your games to the living room. So uh, you would log in. Sorry, the controller turns off. You would log in. Now I'm not connected to the internet, because um, I don't have a wireless card in this thing, so we're gonna log in offline. Logs into your Steam account. There's three components, store, library, and community. This tab over here used to say community, and they just recently changed that to be your name. My name is George, by the way. They just stumbled in here. So, the store is really interesting. Obviously, I don't have internet, so there's nothing for me to show. But what it shows, when we get to the library view, you'll see, and it will show you live, uh, the current sales, the daily specials for the week. Um, actually, when I switch back to my laptop, I'll just switch out the big picture mode, and I'll show you this. Story. So, you can come in here, you can browse games, there's a little indicator to show you which games are controller friendly, which games are not controller friendly. Uh, and you can buy them. Steam has a something on sale every day of the week, every day, every week of the year, and then two or three times a year they have really large sales, the winter sale and the summer sale, where like prices are just cut dramatically and everyone's like, buy, buy, buy. it's amazing. Uh, it's amazing if you love games. Uh, so the library, this shows you all the games that are installed. So, oh, sorry. So this here are actually my Windows games at home, and I'll get into in-home streaming before. Uh, so here's my game library. What I'm going to show you here are the games that I have installed here. And why are the tiles blank? <coughs> yeah, but it's supposed to cache them. I don't know. So, yeah, so it shows you the games. Normally those look cool and very makes you want to play them and stuff like that. These are all stored locally. These are all stored locally here. They're installed in your machine. So the way Steam works is when you buy a game, you install a new machine, but you can install it on any machine that you want. So anytime you reinstall or whatever, I just reinstall games. So it's nice. I buy games once, I play them in my office or I play them in my living room or I play them on my laptop when I'm traveling. I'm buying the game once. And then um, most of the games support Steam Cloud, which sends your save games to the cloud, which is really nice because I can pause playing in one room, go to the other one, and everything just works. I don't have to do anything. Um, and then you can play games here, be a ninja for a little bit. Um, so this is a good game. This is an example of a really well put together game. It has controller support. It goes. Ooh, there's audio. I'm still really good. <laughs> so, remember, one of the challenges of bringing PC games to like a console thing is not everything plays like this, right? A lot of games you launch them, they'll have a splash screen, like, or, or you know, uh, you have to config and pick options. Some games don't even support controllers at all, right? So you have to actually do stuff to configure. Um, so yeah, you're playing a game. Hit the Xbox button for me. 
When you're playing the game, this gives you that Xbox overlay. You can see your friends who own this game. You can take screenshots. Um, it shows you the achievements that you've earned, just like you expect on every console. And then over here, go left. Oh. <coughs> and then you can go to the related forums and groups and support. You can say, hey, everybody, this game is awesome. This game sucks. So uh, go ahead and uh, get out of this. It'd be, and then exit game. <coughs> Uh, hit B to go back. So a lot of this stuff is blank because we don't have an internet connection, so bear with me there. Um, so I had a question. Oh, no, that's just a really tall hat. Okay, uh, hit B again. <laughs> so uh, another feature, C Music. Hit view all. So what you do is you can add a library of stuff on disk. Uh, and it's similar because it's Debian underneath. So what I did is actually go in there and I mounted my music as an NFS directory and I figured it all out. Like your console, your console is Linux. Think about that for a second. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so it'll show album art here, and then you can play the game, and then say, you know, uh, turn the game off and turn the music off in the game, and then like play your game with the music that you like. So that's pretty nice. Steam Music is the most unfinished feature I think so far. It, it's one of the newer ones, so I haven't finished yet. Um, so yeah, these are the games. Normally, this shows. That, have you guys like seen screenshots of this? Like we can, I can go to my browser later and show you. So uh, hit E to go back. Hit B again. And then go to George. So this is interesting, all the people that you're friends with. Actually, this is not interesting at all about internet. Um, it'll show you all your friends, and it'll be like, George added this game to the wish list. So you can like buy it for him. Or, George has achieved this achievement in this game. Or George posted screenshots of this game, and you can kind of do that. And there's a little IM thing there. It's like pretty cool. Um, but you can back out of this here. All right, uh, to go to the settings real quick, go to that little gear dot. There. Yeah. Right. Yeah. There. I just want to go through these real quick. So your account, obvious, no one needs to see that. Friends. Uh, go to in game. Um, this is how you select, you know, what you want your controller stuff to do. It's pretty simple. Uh, home button, right trigger always takes a screenshot. It's really nice. You're like, man, that was really awesome. It even makes up the noise and everything. You get to share that with your friends after you're done. Uh, go back. In home streaming, I'm going to talk about separately, but I wanted to show you the new fade. So the way they're doing the uh, to handle the backlog of Windows games is your Windows, or actually any Steam machine, or any machine running Steam can stream games over the network to other machines. So this is really really covers your Windows box, right? Will go and play the game. It will encode all that into like a 1080p movie, send it over the network, and then your client just plays the movie and sends input back. Sounds crazy, I know. How many of you play with an NVIDIA Shield? I've seen that before. The idea is really nice. It works <coughs> amazingly well. In fact, if I can't show it to you here because you need another computer, but uh, I consider that the cool feature. So that's where you set, like, go back. This is where you set like how much the, you know, Hardware, do you want it fast, or do you want it to look better? A whole bunch of there. Um, but we don't have network here, so that's not important. Um, language off, uh, controller. I'll talk about controllers a bit. Xbox controllers just work. Um, and you can edit control. Don't go in there, please. Hit B. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, go back again. Uh, display, this one's obvious. Uh, audio, I think it's interesting. Uh, the ambient sounds, I like when Steve's in the background, I kind of turn that down. And then, you know, where you want the other stuff to go. Uh, very interesting, you can reconfigure audio. Uh, so, like, when you have it hooked up to your stereo, maybe you want the output going out of the Tosca instead of the HDMI or whatever, whatever. That's all configurable. Please don't mess with that. <laughs> uh, music. Uh, this is kind of dorky. This is, like, when you want it to, like, crawl through your files to check out the stuff. You know, if you wanted logging and things like that. Not really important right now. Uh, back. Voice. This is interesting. So you can plug in headsets uh, to talk to people. That's separate from music, right? You want, like, stuff blowing up, coming out of your speakers. But you want to be like, dude, go left, or whatever. One of the nice things about PC gaming is that it's all USB stuff. That means that you can actually just grab any headset that you have and automatically, right? It's not like a separate gaming headset that only works with your console. Really strange. Yeah. What's what's underneath the uh, voice? 
Ventrilio, something weird like that? Uh, so they have their own thing. Okay. Um, I've noticed that gamers still prefer Ventrilo and, and TeamSpeak and stuff like that. Okay. But this, I'm a, not a hardcore, like, competitive gamer. So for this, 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 you know, hey, man, I died again. Yay. That kind of communication is okay. fine. As to, I, don't, I don't think clans and stuff are using this. Uh, that's nice. The uh, uh, download, this one's important. Uh, allow downloads during gameplay. So if you're like playing online in an online game and everything starts to stutter, you're like, whoa, that's why that is. This comes off by default. Um, but you can set it right, you can set your mirrors, how much bandwidth you use. Um, or you can say, hey, only download between midnight and six in the morning. So it's pretty smart about that. Uh, network, but we don't have one, so there's nothing to show. Next, uh, system, this one's important. You can just say, hey, check for updates. This one's important here, participate in the client beta. So all the stuff I'm showing you here is happening in beta. So you check that, click that checkbox and it auto, auto switches you to like a beta channel and then you get all those updates. Steam, I think the, the stable client releases it's like four or five times a year, whereas beta is, is almost every day there's like an update. It's pretty awesome, very fast. And of course separately, wait, go back to the system, hit this button. That's really app get update and app get upgrade. I'm not kidding. That's exactly what that does. Um, you usually don't need to do that. They set up unattended upgrades, so it's like just doing this Debian thing in the background. That's cool. And then um, you you're probably familiar with this bug here, where like Intel, if you don't have the right stuff, Intel the Intel chip lies to you. So uh, go back. Time zone is obvious. Uh, remote control is interesting. There's like an API that people have found, but no one's actually using this for anything yet, so we'll see what happens with that. So, um, is there anything that you wanted to see that you haven't seen? You said that it only works with a controller. It's not a the keyboard. Oh, it, yeah, I have a whole section on hardware. I'll show okay. you what what is available. Yes. Can you show off the keyboard. Yeah. Uh, where's the? It's right here. This thing. Yeah, hand, hand that up. So any any USB keyboard or mouse or whatever works. Um, I found this guy on Amazon. It's pretty cool. It does arrow keys, a touchpad, and has important Linuxy things like F keys. Right? He was like, check this HTPC keyboard. It like didn't have anything. Like, uh, um, so you just turn this off, and I think it's on. It was a little dongle. You did magic sys request keys on that? Uh, it doesn't. Have to I'm not going to try that, but uh, I'm assuming it does. It's got a print button. It does. So Alt. Let's do the after. But <laughs> <laughs> well, um, something interesting. When you're, let me just try to find a let me try to find a text input field here. Just go to left. Uh, uh, can you hit left bumper for me? Uh, bumper. Yeah. So uh, select something today. All right. How do you get to the? Ah, move the left stick. Control L. Control L. No, hit X. It'll tell you. Uh, edit URL. Yeah. Everyone's like, wow, this is cool. <coughs> this is cool here. I want to show you this. <coughs> like you get, you get like. Uh, you got a set-top box that has QWERTY stuff on the screen. Look how innovative that is. This is this to me is really innovative, right? It makes you really easy to type. Um, this is my favorite like part of Steam. If I only had friends to talk to, it would be okay. Um, but you still do actually need to keep as a state of Steam OS here. You actually do end up needing a keyboard uh, because it's, as as console-like experience when you start messing around, you will find that you need to type. Um, but I use OpenSSH server, and I get to that in the tip section. But I got this little keyboard here for 14 bucks. It's got a touchpad, F keys, everything you need. The only bummer is the cable is micro USB instead of the old USB, the mini one. And I got rid of all those cables, so it's actually a pain in the ass for me. But rechargeable and stuff, it's pretty good. You're good. No, this no, this is nothing awesome. This is just a little keyboard. What's that called? Uh, I don't know, but it's written in the back if you want to take it. How is Phil Mini H7? Oh, there you go. If you search Amazon for so, a wireless keyboard, it's like the cool. seventh result. Is that Bluetooth? Yeah, is that Bluetooth? Uh, no, there's a little dongle. 
And put it in the back. So this is a PC, now you get like way more USB ports than the two that you have a So I actually didn't care. It was also 14 bucks. Um, so, all right, I'll get to the hardware in a minute. I'm going to switch back now. <coughs> yeah? Does it back up your um, like your keys that you, like your, your setup for your controllers or like your buttons? Uh, yeah, so, I'm no, so I don't know if this actually, but I've noticed that when I've done reinstalls and stuff and I install it back, everything I set before was there. So I'm assuming that they're doing that. Um, so let me switch back and we'll talk about other stuff. Well, certainly not as video. Yeah. yeah. Okay, we'll come back to that. In the meantime, let me show you a... Uh... So I'm actually on the network here. And this is probably the scene you know and love. Hey, it's up. What a surprise lately. All right, so uh, this is actually what it looks like when you have a network connection. There you go. Uh, what happened there? So this is what the store looks like. You see games that uh, support the controller in here. Uh, that's a Windows game. And when you're actually in SteamOS, they split out. Oh, wow, that crashed. Sweet. That means, oh, there we go. They actually have a SteamOS Linux section so that you can't hack something like that. Uh, that only work on your thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and here's just as huge what the friend activity looks like. Plus the status is that's what we do, I guess. Um, as you can see, I bought Star Wars pinball tables this morning because they were on sale. Um, but uh, this is brand new. This literally landed like two days ago. So I'm, I'm still figuring that out. So that's what Steam looks like with a network connection. All right. And then we'll come back and I'll let you guys play. We'll pass the controls. We'll pass the controller around and stuff. Not for the killer feature, like a lot of people ask. This is my favorite. Why not wine, right? Like, there's always that guy spending seven hours a day configuring his wine. He gets angry because you don't do that. Um, in home streaming is one of the most coolest things I've ever seen in my life. It literally is like life changing. Like, when I saw in home streaming, I was like, I'm on my way to Micro Center right now. So, um, what this is, is. You're going to be the Windows box. Now, this, it doesn't matter what the OSs are. Remember, this is the Steam level, not the OS level. It's important to know. And uh, what's a favorite Windows game people are playing? Civilization 5. OK, that's, that's a good game. Natural Selection 2. Natural Selection 2, OK. I guess that's OK. Uh, no, no, Bioshock Infinite. OK, got it. So you can play Bioshock Infinite on your Windows machine, right? So. Steam client runs over there, Steam client runs over here. You're signed into both. I know that was like impossible with Steam, you know, like till like last month. Um, so what happens is, is on my little UI with all the games, it shows all my Windows games because the Steam clients are talking on the back. Then when I hit Bioshock Infinite and I hit A, instead of play, it says stream. Then I hit stream. What happens? Bioshock Infinite runs on the Windows machine. Now the front end, my SteamOS box in the living room, does nothing, but it just says like, wait, or something. This loads by Shock Infinite. Then the CPU takes everything that the graphics card is doing and encodes it into a movie, right? Like MP4, H.264, whatever, it does matter. Then it plays that movie back to me. So the client, all it has to do is play an HD movie, basically. I'm, like, I'm really simplifying this so nobody flip out if like, I picked the wrong one. Then I'm sitting here with my controller, and this control, this machine is sending the control inputs back to Bioshock Infinite. So as far as Bioshock Infinite is known, knows, right? I'm just hitting buttons. Now, over a gigabit connection on Ethernet, this is glorious. It is amazing. It's like 1080p, 60 frames per second for a lot of games. It's really great. Um, even over wireless, is not bad. You got to crank down the quality and stuff a little bit. But to me, this is really great. First of all, you're not spending a lot of time trying to figure out how to make Windows games work on, on Linux, right? Who's the target audience for this right now? Right now, it's 
people who are existing Steam gamers who want to not be in this room, I want to be out on my couch with my big ass HDTV, right? Not, not in my office. So it is excellent. I wish I could show it to you, but last time I had to bring like three computers and then my hard drive got loose in my car and I was like, I'm not bringing two computers this time. But it is the killer feature of, of Steam in general. It's amazing. Yes? Just to clarify, the PC uh, in your gaming room away from the living room is yes. doing the heavy lifting? All the heavy lifting. And this, this instrument would just be doing the front activated. This is streaming. The only thing this has to do is be able to decode a 1080p movie, which I'll get to hardware recommendations in a minute, because you know what? There are a lot of things that can decode 1080p with zero problems. Okay. Yeah? What's, uh, can, it, can it go across network? Can you just you know, broadcast it to work? Or so, no. It's clients? interesting. Everybody's like, we're going to do in-home streaming, right? The first, can, I, can I do this over my VPN? It's like, dude, come on. 1080p, 60 frames a second, no. Um, but there's no reason it can't head that way. I'm sure if you had a transparent VPN it didn't know any better, it would be slow. It, it, it's a relatively new feature. It started landing in January. And it was one of those features that was get, getting improvements like once a week. And it's now April, and it's, it's almost nearly there. It's like, um, it's just a really great feature. And it's really nice because if you've had a lot invested in Windows games and things like that, uh, it's a really nice way to do that, and that gives Valve some flexibility, and I'll talk about that in a minute. So it is... How would you tell about the lag? There must be some lag. It's Ethernet. It's gigabit Ethernet. You, you'd converting be... it to a video, going to another computer, it is... converting it. Yep. I don't believe it either. <laughs> so I, I, I didn't really believe until I went to uh, Micro Center, and NVIDIA makes a little device called the Shield. It's like ugly. Like, it's like 200 bucks. But it actually does the exact same thing, except it's a video specific, but whatever. And it wasn't until I was sitting there playing it, and I was, what was I called? Because I heard about the Steam streaming thing. I was like, that ain't no, that's more complicated. Whatever, you know, what's gaming is going to have to deal with it. Um, then I played this, I was like, holy shit, this is pretty good. Um, but yeah, I first landed, I was doing stuff at 720, and then I was doing stuff at, well, at first it started, I was doing 720 at 30 frames a second, aka Xbox One. Um, then 720 at 60 frames a second, then I bumped up to 1080 at 30, and now I'm doing 1080 at 60 in games like Bioshock and stuff. People come over, they don't even know. They're like, you want to play Mortal Kombat? <coughs> Console controllers all work. It's, it's great. Um, so remember, the goal there is to get your existing stuff to the living room. Uh, so that's why that is. I said this. For most games, I'm getting 1080p at 60 frames a second. There's still some corner cases, though. There's certain times where they'll do an update. And, and a game will break or whatever. But the feature's still in beta, so that's that's working. It works surprisingly well over wireless, especially if you have like N or AC wireless. Uh, if you have G, then Y. Um, and remember too, if you're going to do this stuff over N, uh, make sure your router is like smart enough to know if a G device is on the wireless that it doesn't bump everyone down at G speed. That's like number one. It's like a big issue. Um, but it does work best over Ethernet. Actually, at first, I was doing it over power line networks, and it was okay, right? That's like AC plugs and Ethernet. Surprisingly fast, like 200 megabits. The lag was a little bad, though. So I actually paid for a dude to like run a cable. That's how pumped up I was about this feature. Um, and there's still some cases where it's not working well. Um, maybe we could show a video or something of someone using it. Unfortunately, in this environment, that's not something I can demo. But um, if you have more than one machine at home, uh, they opened up in the Lettuce beta, if you just enable beta in the client, every beta user in Steam has access to the feature. So even if you think I'm lying and you have two computers with Steam, try it. Um, and I think you'll be impressed. Um, the developer who's doing this is incredible. He, the release notes are very um, uh, thorough, like he just always tell you, tells you what he's working on, very responsive. Uh, it's my favorite feature on Steam. Those require two PCs, though, right? That's why I'm like, why not fix mine? Ah, I need two computers. But look at us. How many of you have more than two PCs or computing devices at home? I know. Right? I don't know if that's a good thing, right? But they want to get another. But then again, you know, I am streaming games over the internet faster than the Xbox One can render and like games natively. What? I'll say that again. I am streaming games over a network faster than the Xbox One can render things natively. Wow, that's pretty sweet. Um, so in case not obvious, SteamOS is a platform. 
covers the back catalog product they, so they can concentrate on improving Linux. They always went out after the game middleware company, so they're always announcing this new engine or whatever is now running on, on Linux. It's a cross-platform world. No game developers are developing for Windows only or whatever. They have to cover everything, right? They cover costs. Um, and developers target the Steam runtime, not a Linux. That's very important. Uh, Steam runtime is based on Ubuntu 1204, now it's based on Ubuntu 1404. So don't worry, we're still in there. Uh, so let's build one. Hardware here, motherboard, RAM, <laughs> video. I don't know what that means. Uh, my build. So the motherboard, it's a AS Rock H87 Mini ITX. It's a cheaper version of the motherboard that they put in the Steam machine prototypes that they sell out to people. Put an Intel i3 in it, pretty good. Seagate 2 terabyte SSHD, that's not a typo. So it's a 2 terabyte disk with a little bit of SSD cache in it. Um, it's really nice for performance and booting. The OS just needs one disk, and the disk is doing all the hard work. Uh, NVIDIA GTX 750Ti, I'll talk about this card later. And Cooler Master 110, this guy right here, uh, which is really nice. You can also buy all this stuff locally. Thank you, 10 minutes left. You can also buy this stuff locally, um, which I usually buy my stuff off Amazon, but then I was really into it and it was really late. So I like woke up in the morning to go to Micro Center to buy all my stuff. Um, Reddit, build a PC. That, sorry, that's a typo. That should be slash R, build a PC. Um, people always post there, hey, I want to build a computer. I want to put these parts. And people are like, no, this is that. Um, the hardest part will be the case, though. Um, PC manufacturers still don't get it, right? They're like, um, I wanted a case, but it has like a CD in it. Uh, I don't know why. Uh, vendor steam machines are even awesome. They like announced them, and a whole bunch of people, a whole bunch of them, just basically took their gaming PC and slapped a Steam logo on it. And like, I, I don't understand. Half of them are using um, AMD Fusion cards, which are awesome in Linux. I, I don't know why they do that. Um, Valve has said that for their case, they will be publishing the CAD files. So that's what I'm kind of waiting on, so I can finally get a cool console-looking case uh, that isn't so square and boxy. Um, the current cases that people can get, look at this, I mean, this is a pretty cool case. Still looks like a computer in your living room, right? No one wants a computer in their living room, I hate it. However, this is pretty badass, you know? <clears throat> this is sweet. Um, so this case makes me want to have a PC in my living room. Controller, so this is the part everyone's talking about. Now that I'm running out of time, I'm rambling too much. Um, Xbox 360 controllers work out of the box. You need to get this little dongle here. This is $12 on Amazon. Supports up to four controllers. It's all automatic. Works just like the Xbox. You hit the button. It's, it's awesome. Remember, everyone's buying Xbox Ones now, which means you can find Xbox 360 controllers used. Pretty cheap. So mine's pink. <laughs> you got a problem with cancer research? <laughs> uh, normal PC controllers just work. In fact, on SteamOS, when you use a normal PC controller and the game on Windows is expecting Xbox controllers, it will do the translation in the stream. So you can actually use uh, the Logitech style uh, controllers. I know, right? Uh, PS3, PS4 controllers, uh, same as PC, they don't really work. People try to write software, but I don't know why Sony did that. Uh, of course, whatever was talking about the Steam controller, this is the first cut. Um, there's an entire video of their hardware iterative process for how they made the Steam controller on Valve's YouTube channel. Please watch it, it is great. Like they went through every iteration of trackballs and like crazy, crazy stuff everywhere. This is what it used to look like. This is gonna be like a touch screen and color and do all these things. And then they did user testing. And this is what it looks like now. Um, so you know, your kind of traditional buttons, that's gonna be right look, up to your left. It has a legacy mode so that on games that don't have controller support but work keyboard only, um, you could use that with that. This is what everyone's waiting on. They said the fall, like October ish, is what I'm guessing. Uh, and you know, solving input. If you think about it, bringing PC games to the couch, solving input, all of a sudden becomes a big deal. I don't think they're envisioning you sit there with your. And I've tried it too, with like your trackball and keyboard and that stuff. Um, Nvidia. If you have an Nvidia GTX 760, 770, or 780, you're good to go. You just works, finds it, you're good. Um, it works, but remember, those, those cards are like long, right, right? Um, my favorite card, currently, 
NVIDIA GTX 750 Ti, this is a non-TI, short, next generation Maxwell, that means this is like the newest, the newest NVIDIA tech right here, <clears throat> has every plug that you need, what is it? the nicest thing is what this car does not have, which makes it a killer, does anybody know? Power. Power, power. power. power plug, any piece of crap PC, you stick this card in, this card plays Titanfall better than an Xbox one. Right, well on Windows. And your stream eyes. But, uh, this is... <laughs> no, the TI does, it does. The 2 gig one, I got the 1 gig one. Um, but yeah, Titanfall runs best on PC. You're kidding me. What? We're, we're, we'll I'm argue with you. Right. Oh, okay. You, you, you master race too? That's fine, that's fine. <laughs> so this card is the one to get. I think. Uh, this is going to be the best reference card, I think, over the next six to nine months at least, uh, to do that. The drivers of Steam OS are behind. The reason it's sitting in my hand is because I was having problems with it. At first, it recognized everything was fine, then it was getting crashers. So I switched to the Intel built-in one in the meantime until they, they sort that out. Plus, I wanted you guys to see it. See? Look at the effort I put in my car. Um, it's almost like they designed this card for Steam OS. It's great. Uh, Intel. <coughs> Always been world-class supporters of Linux, no problems there. Uh, have you guys seen the Intel NUC, next unit of computing? It's a little box like this. Gigabyte bricks. One of the Steam machines is actually a gigabyte bricks. Uh, very, it's like the perfect portable Steam box. It's great. Uh, integrated graphics are improving immensely today, so it's not like it used to be that they were garbage. They keep getting better. They're expensive. Of course, the elephant in the room. What about AMD ATI, my favorite? This is my favorite thing people say on the road. This will force AMD to fix their driver. How many of you have been using Linux longer than five minutes? Yeah. So this is my response. <laughs> that is not happening. That is not happening anytime soon as far as I can tell. Um, poor support. Um, put your AMD GPU if you have it in your Windows box for streaming. That's handy. Uh, Fusion will make for some kick-ass Steam box, right? Because it's integrated, but, uh, but small. Uh, the OSS driver for the GPU is actually pretty good. And of course their CPUs are pretty great bang for the buck still. Unfortunately, I want to believe, but avoid for now. Um, installing SteamOS, guess what? Can you install Debian? Raise your hand if you can install Debian. There you go. Too easy. There's really nothing else to say here. Um, do dedicate a drive to it though. It's kind of designed to be like... The first one it came out, it would just find the first disk and wipe it. No! Uh, so do that. If you need to do boot, there's a community build called uh, Stevenson's Rocket by Joe Shields at Calabra. And he actually supports like shrinking NTFS partitions and stuff and doing a bunch of stuff. So that's really good. Um, not a good place to learn Linux, right? It's like, hey, someone, I, I want to get like my entire Windows library working on Wine. I've never installed Linux before. You're just gonna have a you're gonna have a bad time. Um, just stick to a normal distro or something in that case. Um, but when you mess up, it reinstalls in 15 minutes. You just stick the USB key in. It like wipes it. There's an automated install. It's kind of it's really nice. Um, my advice: mistakes I made. Do not move to the living room too early, right? Like she came home and I had like machine my machine in parts and my connection to my office wasn't good, so I had my streaming machine also. There's like power supplies everywhere cables, like when you are building and messing around with this thing and components, you will be messing up and doing really weird things. So I recommend build it and use it um, on your desk or somewhere that's not the living room, especially when it's in pieces. Um, I also break it for no reason because I'm a nerd. So I'll be like, oh, you know, maybe I'll try to do a Butterfest snapshot of my safe games. And like, just bad, bad things are happening. So. Uh, see, I only made two mistakes. Yeah, right. <laughs> things I did right. No, um, if you're a Linux user, you know the absolute key thing: pick the right hardware. That's if you learn one thing, please pick the right hardware. Uh, this is interesting. If you don't know Linux, but you think this is a good idea, build a Windows machine and then just set Steam to auto start and go into big picture mode. Then you can have your little safety net, right? and then you can figure out if this is a thing that you want full time. If you don't dig it, that's cool too. Um, some things I'm doing, uh, NFS mounts for my music. I got Dropbox working on there, headless, so it like syncs uh, uh, all my music as well. So I have music available twice. Just I wanted to see NFS versus Dropbox and things like that. So uh, that's a good idea. All the Linux tools that you're used to are available on your Steam box, like RSync and stuff. Hey, um, 
save your marriage, man. Have have like a, like a moving away from your Steam box to the Roku or whatever it is you use in your house will like totally save the day. It's like, sorry, we can't watch TV today. I decided to reinstall. It's horrible. Uh, so what really sucks is the console over time. Oh my god, I got like 30 seconds. Um, no good sports games. Like if you move to PC gaming, uh, there's like FIFA soccer, which you know that's going to be a streaming game and stuff like that. Uh, game companies things, launch streams are a good idea. Uh, where are my friends playing? That's why I had to give this talk, so I have someone to play with. Um, like I have a lot of friends on my Xbox social graph, right? That's like important. Um, there's a ton of junk in the Steam store, man. There's some real garbage in there. And as you saw yesterday while I was preparing for this talk, Steam service like this has been generally a piece of garbage. I don't know what's going on there, but hopefully they'll sort that. Seven minutes? <laughs> um, Steam customer support is non-existent. You are on your own. Uh, despite this, PC gaming in the living room is glorious. So therefore, are you a geek? Yeah. Woo -woo. This is ready for you. This will be ready for your friends a lot sooner than you think. So controllers, what, in the fall, let's say September, October, um, and that's probably when people, people who don't want to go through all this entire nightmare can just go to the store and buy the Steam machine. Uh, there's some things I didn't cover, right? Like, where are all the games and things like that. There's tons of things cost? that need to happen. What? How much does it cost? This box? Uh, from scratch, five, between five and six hundred bucks. About the cost of PlayStation, or Xbox One, PlayStation 4 is about a hundred dollars cheap. Um, like I said, with a card like this, go to that used place on Southfield Road that grabs all those old corporate computers and resells them. Stick this card on it. Mr. Tupac. Uh, so it's not a great weekend project. Uh, kind of buy a Bluetooth talk. You actually missed it already, sorry. Uh, thanks. I will be around all day if you guys want to hang out at the bar, have a beer. Um, I think there's a talk in here, so I can't let you play with it. It's probably not that long. If you're looking for a great weekend project, it's good. It's good fun. Yeah. There's at least one wine based game in the yeah. So Fantastic what's okay with me is when the developer takes all the wine stuff and then there's a blob and I run it. And some other thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's the problem. This is clearly, this clearly was not a successful discussion. <laughs> we'll try and do better next year. Amazing.